All right, today's Infrared Sauna question is on sauna Wi-Fi and Bluetooth EMF. This is for Sam. Sam says, hi Matt, your website is unreal. Really helped me wade through all the murkiness of the sauna companies. I recently purchased a Clearlight Sanctuary sauna. I got a massive $50 discount, laughing out loud, from your mate in the sauna detox group. <laughs> I've been saying for a year <laughs> that the sauna is the same price through Clearlight Direct and that there's no savings. That's why I always got pissed off when people would, uh, eh, whatever. Anyway, that group seems to have a massive phobia of EMF and I was wondering if do I really need to disconnect my Wi-Fi and even Bluetooth. Thanks, Sam. No, if you've got a brand new sanctuary, I wouldn't worry about it that much. Um, they do have a method where you can disconnect it if you're EMF sensitive, but the ones that I have tested, for the most part, um, it depends on what you're doing with it too. If, is it a sanctuary one? I guess it doesn't say which model it is. Anyway, if, um, there's a decent drop off rate like from the ceiling down to where your head is. I really wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, there are some EMF sensitive people that I've helped in the past. Um, or let me rephrase that. I would use the sauna and not disconnect the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth in a current model. There are some other saunas that are made by other companies where the sauna gets connected to the internet and it does some other things. I think you could actually connect the sanctuary to the internet too with the app. You don't have to do all this stuff. So if it's not doing that, it's not going to emit the same amount of um, stuff. But um, basically in the past, if, if there were people that are sensitive to EMF or sensitive to cell phones and are complaining about this and they're asking to buy a sauna, then you know we take it super seriously and it's like, you know, just get a sauna without all that stuff. But if you're a relatively healthy individual um, and you're not gonna be doing crazy things with the sauna, um, no, I think you'd be fine. I don't think you need to disconnect it. A current model, the, the emissions from it really aren't that bad. Um, if it bothers you, you can always disconnect it, but then it kind of ruins the stereo system. You can't use the speakers, which sort of pisses me off, but um, they should really have, because it's easy to put a switch in there, you should be able, they should really fix that next year in the new models. Um, but no, I, I don't think, um, I think you'd be fine. If, uh, if you had any type of issues with it, I think you would have indicated it in the email. For other people that are, um, you know, electro hypersensitive, yeah, it's an issue. Usually I just recommend that they get a different sauna. I mean, you can get a clear light, um, you can get a clear light Premiere, doesn't have Wi-Fi in it, just has the Bluetooth, which is a little bit better. But again, the emissions are relatively low, especially if you're not using it, that's the thing. It, it only pings to look for a connection if it's not hooked up to something. So if you hook it up to something and then you're not actually using it, <laughs> it's really not pinging that much. Um, the Wi-Fi stuff can be a little different in some other saunas, like certain Sunlightens. Um, there's another one that has a, what you call it, control panel that is connected to the internet all the time. Uh, but it really just depends on where they put the equipment to. So uh, if, if you were concerned with that, an easy thing that anyone can do is figure out where the equipment is. Like if it's under the bench, it's really easy to do because you can take the bench off and just put a piece of foil on the, glue a piece of foil to the back of the bench and the back of the calf um, separator there. That creates like a mini Faraday cage. It'll reflect, um, you know, those emissions. If it's in the ceiling, you can unscrew the stuff and just put a sheet of foil underneath it. That'll prevent those um, from coming down towards your head. This, these are things that generally electrosensitive people or, or people suffering from EHS do. As a general rule, um, your exposure limit for the general population, if you're a healthy individual, most people don't notice a difference. I don't notice a difference on the newer saunas. Um, there have been some in the past um, that I thought were bad, but in hindsight, there could have been some muddying of the waters, meaning sometimes the LED lights or other things in the ceiling, not just the, the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi, can be giving off a massive magnetic field. Um, and if you're not, most people don't think to test up there, like with a meter, usually you're just testing the heaters and everything else. But we found in, in some of the old saunas, it wasn't necessarily uh, just the RF in there that was the problem, there was other things. but. In your case, I think you'd be fine. If there's something else I can do to help you, Sam, uh, let me know. See you guys in tomorrow's video.